Okay, welcome to your first C++ programming class or course, lecture, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio to write the code and compile it and run the actual code. You can use um, Notepad. Any way you want to compile it, you're going to have to use a compiler. Uh, Visual Studio is very good at putting everything into an integrated development environment. In fact, that's what this is called, an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. When you first open up Microsoft Visual Studio, you might see a page similar to this if you have the 2015 version. What I'm going to do is start a new project, which you can see right here, or you can go to File, New, and click on Project here. And of course, Control Shift N will do the same thing. So I clicked on that. On the left hand side, you see Templates. Uh, go to Visual C, and then scroll down to Win32 and click on Win32 console application. There's lots of options in here. I don't know how to use most of these. Uh, Microsoft Foundation classes would be this, maybe for creating some uh, GUI interfaces or whatnot, but we're gonna stick to the console application Win32 version. Uh, name your project, whatever you want. My first program is cool. Whatever you want to name it, you have a location here where it's going to be storing all the files and the solution name is the same as your project name. Hit OK. For now just kind of click through this. This is just telling you what you're about to create. Click Next. Application settings. You want to keep the settings the way they are for now so just go ahead and click Finish. And as you can see when you do finish this, it's going to come up with uh, this right here, the my first program is cool .cpp file. It's going to be displayed here, and if you have more files, they'll be tabbed over, and you can have multiple files within a C++ program that you're creating, and we're going to get to that eventually. As you can see that some of this stuff is already put here for you. You didn't put that there. And same with over here on the left. This is your Solution Explorer. As you gain experience and you add files to your program, they're all going to be neatly organized over here on the left-hand side. For now, just know that this header file, whenever you see a number include, that's a header file or a pre-compiled header, the stdafx.h you just need that for this environment that you're working with. Um, it is not standard for all C++, but it is for Visual Studio. Uh, some older versions of Visual Studio, you do not need to include this. Um, don't worry about the specifics for now. But we are going to include another precompiled header called include iostream, just like that. And you've got to put them in the brackets. If you don't put them in the brackets, um, it'll default to a default directory. If you put them in the brackets, it knows to go to a certain area where the programs were loaded and IOStream or C standard library. There's all kinds of libraries and it knows where to fetch those libraries using the bracket or the, I'm sorry, the uh, less than and greatest, greater than symbols here. If you use the quotes as up here, it's going to look in the directory that the project is in for that actual file, which you can see our header file stdafx.h is same here. It was automatically created for us, but it's also going to be in that directory where our files are located. The iostream is not, and you won't see iostream over here. Okay, so every C++ program starts off usually with the pre-compiled headers, the number sign, or the pound, they might call it, include. Um, up here you have comments. Anything with the double forward slashes is a comment. This is a comment. You can add more comments because white space doesn't matter. And there's another way to create comments. So I'll just show you that now is using the forward slash star and then this integrated development environment, Microsoft Visual Studio. Once I did forward slash star, it automatically put the star forward slash which ends the comment but this gives you the opportunity to do a multi-line comment so this is a multi-line comment so you can have comments like that you can have them as long as you want white space does not matter in C++ 
But the, the point of this is to show you that you can have multi lines using this notation as well. Forward slash star, and then to end it, star forward slash. And forward slash forward slash is a single line comment. Every program usually starts off with something similar to this as a beginner programmer in C++. IO stream stands for input output streams, and we're going to talk heavily on that as we go forward. Every C++ program has a main function, and that's what you see here. This, this entire area here is the main function. Now, we didn't talk about functions, but maybe you're familiar with mathematical functions or just functions in general for uh, other programming languages. I'm going to give you the very brief, basic idea of what this function is and what are functions, and then we'll create our first program. As you can see, there's an int, and it's highlighted in blue because of my IDE knows that that's a reserved keyword for C++, so it's going to highlight it for blue in blue for us. Now the name of the function is main, and it starts off with an open and a closed parenthesis, and then an open bracket, and then eventually it's going to have a closed bracket. Everything between the open and closed bracket is part of your main function. It's part of the main function scope. Anything outside that bracket is not part of the main function or the main function scope. Um, integer is a variable. In other words, you can store data in an integer. Uh, every function does not have to return a value, but most do. And what this function does, it returns the number 0. And where it's returning that 0 in this case is back to the operating system itself. The operating system will know that this program functioned correctly when it returns 0 to the operating system. It knows how to deal with the memory allocation, all the memory pieces, everything that was loaded into memory, it knows they can now override those, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So just like in mathematics, you can only have one output of a function. So you can return only one thing. And the way that they're declared, integer main, just like that. Main's going to return one integer function. Anyways, let's get started with a simple program because the hardest thing about your first C++ program is compiling it and trying to figure out why it does or does not compile correctly. What does compile even mean? Like it's just a very, that first program is the hardest one. After you get that to work, you can Google everything and you'll realize you're just missing one piece of the puzzle that was stopping you from doing this a long time ago. Anyways, so we're going to start off with a typical hello world. And what we do is we use a standard template library, standard C out, and then the less than less than symbol, and quotes, hello world. And in, in Microsoft Visual Studio, it'll automatically put that end quote in there. So I hit tab and it brings me out of that quote. Every C++ line of code has to end with a semicolon for the most part. So let's go ahead and put that semicolon in there, telling the program or the, the compiler that this is the end of the line. Now, this is a fully functional program here, but I'm going to show you something that's going to cause us problems. To run a program, you can either, usually you'd want to go to debug and go to start debugging, or other IDEs might have them labeled differently or in different menus. Usually, almost all the Visual Studios have the F5 key as a shortcut and you can just click F5 and it's going to start debugging and running your program. So let's go ahead and click on start debugging and and it's going to tell you that you want you need to build this program before you can debug it. Would you like to build it? Yes, I'm going to build it. It's going to put all the pieces together to make this a functioning program and you saw something just pop up and it disappeared. And the reason why it disappeared, let me go through the code here for you. When the program was first executed, it goes into this integer main function. And what does it do? It sees out, std colon colon c out, c out. That's how we, we say it, like s-e-e -E dash out. It's seeing out hello world to the screen. It's a stream. C out is a stream. And once it does that, the next line of code is return zero. Exit successfully from this program. So what it did was it opened the program, it printed hello world, and then it exited before you can even really see hello world. So a little workaround while you're editing your programs and playing around and learning is to create an input where it's going to wait for you to do something before it closes. So let's, let's do that just so you can get your first program going and you can start playing around. 
so standard see out is a stream that sees outward, like out to the screen, out to a printer, out to a server. And then you have standard see in with the, notice the forward, the greater than symbol instead of the less than. One's called the extraction and the other one's called the insertion operator. Standard CN, we want to see in a variable, but we didn't create the variable yet. In C++, before you can use a variable, you have to create that variable or initialize. So I'm going to make room in memory, and I'm going to say I have an integer variable called pause. Now it's a name that I just chose, and I'm going to set it equal to nothing. So I'm going to put semicolon there. I could have said pause equals zero. It doesn't matter. I'm going to override that anyways. Um, you can initialize it that way. You can also initialize. When I say initialize, I mean give it a start and value. Because right now, the way it is, integer pause, um, it's creating a space for an integer data type in memory. It's creating that space, but it's not filling it with anything. So if those address, the address of pause was to be used by some sort of other program that's running, it's, um, it's going to look at that data and it's going to show random data that was in that memory location before. Anyways, more on that later down the road. But it is nice to always initialize your variables just so you don't have that problem. So if another another program was accessing that, that memory location, it would actually read the, the uh, number zero now instead of random bits because we initialize pause equals zero. And the equals operator is an assignment operator. It will assign what's on the right to the variable that's on the left. So zero is assigned to pause. Now, back to the standard CN. CN from the keyboard, because we didn't specify any other methods. It's going to be defaulted to the keyboard. Standard CN, pause. Like I said, we're going to override pause. And we're not going to do much with this at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and run this now. And remember, you can hit F5 or go to debug, start debugging. So let's go ahead and click that. Would you like to build? I'm going to click on do not show this dialog again because I always want to build when I'm debugging. So that you'll not see this again. Yes. Okay. So now you see the program popped up and it says hello world and it's just sitting there waiting for an input. Um, from this point you can hit enter or edit, put a value, a value in there. Uh, it, won't, it won't take until you put an actual digit or character in there. Hello world, I just typed in number four from the keyboard, hit enter. Now you know what your program actually did. So I call this a little pause function because you kind of want to put that in on most of your programs while you're starting out. Let's move on from there and just add a couple more uh, see out statements so you can, I can show you different um, things you can do with it. Um, you, can, you can run the see out again, see out to the screen, more stuff. But you notice there's no end line character. Um, so when I run this, if I hit F5 like I'm going to do, it's going to look... Oh, I ran it and it says there were build errors. Would you like to continue to run from the last successful build? No. If it's not going to build the right way, I'm not going to do it. As you can see down here in the output, it's going to tell me what my error is, or at least it tries to. So if you double click on your error, which it looks like a long bit of you know stuff to read but the error is actually starting way over here where it says error syntax error integer should be preceded by a semicolon remember I said every line ends with a semicolon I forgot to put the semicolon in there so now I added the semicolon right here and it should work now now when I hit F5 I'm just gonna hit F5 it's going to show you hello world exclamation point more stuff right well we want to put a new line in there so what we can do is we can use an escape character, which usually, which always starts off with backslash, and then something like N or backslash A would be an alert. What this does is this, this combination of characters actually isn't read by C out in the normal fashion. It actually knows. That means new line, enter a new line. So watch when I hit F5 again. I'm going to hit F5 on my keyboard. It's going to put a new line in there. Hello world, more stuff. All right? Another way to create a new line, if you didn't like the backslash n method, or if you want to end the stream, you can do the extraction operator and type in standard end line. And you can get used to that really, really quickly. Standard C out, say what you're going to say, and then end the line, standard end line, E-N-D-L. And now you should see two spaces when I hit F5. 
there you go, you have two spaces there. And there's all kinds of other th other escape characters, like if you wanted to print the actual quote or something like that, there's an escape character to print the actual quote. Um, you might want to Google all escape characters for C++ and you'll find a lot more information on that. Anyways, this is your first program and I wanted to make it very simple because the hardest part of your first program is not the actual code, it's not this, the actual hardest part is compiling it for the first time and knowing this little trick with the pause, what I, what I did here, integer pause, see in that pause, otherwise the program will completely end before you even get to see it. And I will be posting these videos routinely, so come back and take a look at the next one.